So we are live on the Yardley Borough EAC meeting, all you zero YouTubers. Um, so the whole main point of this was I was going to relay some info from Liz uh, regarding the grant. I actually spoke to her this morning. So this is as fresh as it gets. Um, I feel like I had something else before I jumped right into this on the project, but whatever. So the invoice to ASA was paid at the last council meeting and they got a green light from their management to go ahead with the project and they're scheduled to install equipment and do the bathmetric survey next Friday. So it's gonna start. And I haven't been over to the stream in a while. Um, I just know from being out in the world that it's like really low flows everywhere. So I was gonna go out this weekend and take some photos of those gauging sites and send them to Dan uh, at ASA and see what he thinks. I'm just like worried. The transducer's like, I guess he, probably like that big and it needs to be fully submerged in water. So we need like a good spot. And some of these like riffle areas are really shallow. So I don't know, I'll, we'll see, I guess. Um, and I asked Liz about keeping them in over the winter. She said she thought it was probably fine, but we can touch bases with Dan because they are weatherproof sensors. Um, so that's good. And I got some feedback from Dan on the barometric sensors, correcting for atmospheric pressure, and he doesn't think it's needed. So that's fine because every, I guess, reading is gonna be, is gonna have some atmospheric pressure on it. So the only difference is gonna be the difference in atmospheric pressure, which is probably gonna be such a low amount of error compared to the error in actually measuring the stream flow. So it'll probably be fine. That's why he said it's probably not needed for this scope of work. And if we really wanted to, we could get like a local weather station, I guess, and just correct it that way or something. But she did mention that ASA was gonna do all the post-processing of the sensor data and send it to us corrected as a stream flow value. So that's good. I mean, we don't have to do that, which is nice. Um, so that was kind of it regarding the sensors. And they're also gonna do the bathmetric survey, which is promising. So they're gonna get the depth of water, but then also like depth of like slop sediment at the bottom of the lake. So that's good that we'll get like that layer of sludge thickness, like how deep that is, which is probably pretty deep considering this thing has been filling up since it's been constructed probably. I don't, do you guys know if it's ever been dredged? Probably not, right? Probably not. I didn't even know it was one meter deep until I read the uh, hydro report. Yeah, it's not really deep at all. It's like, I don't know, a frying pan of water just heating up in the sun, especially now that old trees are coming down. So um, regarding the quarterly report, she hasn't, well, it's like complete, but she needs to change it now that ASA has been paid. So she's waiting on the reimbursement paperwork from Paula, and then she's gonna send in that quarterly report, which will have all of our in-kind match to June, which will meet the 15% requirement. So all the match after that point is just like um, bonus Extra. on top. But we're, yeah, but we're trying to get to that 25% point that we said we were gonna meet. And I feel like we'll get there, so. Um, so that's good. And then she is still waiting on lab quotes to come in, which is insane. Um, the lab Eurofins just, she said Envirofins. Isn't it Eurofins? I just said that off the cuff because that's what we used to use in consulting. They've, they've changed names so many times. Michael, oh, maybe it's Envirofins and, now? Yeah, they were, I think, purchased by somebody. Someone in PA had um, 
some no-no on fudging QA, QC data, some lab. I feel like it was Eurofence. <laughs> I don't know. It was some PA lab, though. Although they still show up Hopefully as Eurofins. Yeah, she said Envirofins, but maybe, maybe she, she was just, just... made a mistake. Yeah. I wrote down Envirofins. I was like, something sounds wrong about that. But who knows? So we're probably just like such a small job on the radar that they're not caring unless Liz is pushing. And I think Liz said it kind of fell off her radar. So she's getting back on that soon it's to get strange, the lab quotes. <clears throat> strange lab to pick, though. I can't imagine that they would be the cheapest. I don't know. Um, maybe Remington Vernick has a deal with them in place. Some kind of master service agreement or whatever they're called. Um, I just found uh, septic with Envirofin name. That's about it. Yeah. They they might have like a some agreement with Eurofins just uh, because I know they do MS4 stuff, so they have to collect some samples at some point in your right. main lives, So I don't know. Um so that's where the lab thing is. And once we get the quote, we can just like choose what fits in our budget and do that and, and start the sampling and get the training done. And then we go out and fill bottles with water and, you know, collect them. As far as the visual assessment goes with COVID and everything, she said, we're looking at next summer, um, which is reasonable. And I know we had mentioned we wanted to do that first and then determine where to collect the samples. I think it just makes sense to collect the samples at the gauging sites. Cause then you're like, we have a flow here and we have a measurement there. There's your loading rate. So I think that makes sense. And it's better not to rush the uh, visual field assessment and training. Although it has been like a full year since people signed up. So if we email them, they're gonna be like, what's this? because <laughs> I have people messaging me like a month after like hey is that training happening and now it's been 12 months so it's definitely um, we'll have to I don't know maybe do another reach out event or something or I'm sure if we just coordinate with LMT EAC they, their events are usually well attended so we'll probably get enough people to show up anyways as long as we coordinate with them um, and I had mentioned the possibility of doing macro portion under the visual field assessment because that was included in the visual field assessment protocol from that ASA suggested and recommended and was going to do the training on. So like maybe we could do that. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. And she hasn't recently spoken to him, David Burke at paid up about the grant timeline, but the last time she had, he said these projects tend to go sideways a lot and there is an extension process and she didn't really seem worried about it. Um, so she wouldn't, she said she wouldn't be worried about losing grant funding or anything like that if it's not all spent by the three year mark because we're like coming up on a year behind if we wanted two years of data collection, we're gonna be like three quarters behind, which isn't awesome. COVID is not awesome. So <laughs> lots of things are not awesome recently. And um, she said there were new re MS4 requirements on, I guess what's kind of like a source water assessment for watersheds where you need to like go out and identify specific sources of impairment or pollution and go through a formal investigation on all that and that the township and borough need to have that done. And that kind of ties in with our visual field assessment. So it'll be interesting to see how um, they can both help each other. So that's kind of it in terms of a grant update, but it seemed like it was all good stuff and like something is actually gonna happen soon. So that's good, I guess. You guys have any thoughts or questions or concerns? All right. Sounds good. Well, that's all I had on our super long agenda. The other item was new business. So 
Any new business? Anything you guys want to discuss formally on YouTube? No, now but I, I, I on YouTube? Are, where are we on approving agenda minutes? Do we need to take care of some <laughs> administrative things? Yeah. We probably do. I'll just watch all the YouTube recordings. And take and some notes. Take some notes, I guess. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that still applies because we are recording these. Do we? Yeah, minutes kind of sounds stupid yeah. if it's recorded verbatim. Right. But council still does that. So we should probably be doing it. And I know we didn't meet for a couple months during the early stages of the pandemic. So there's going to be a couple months where there's nothing and there's probably like three months of minutes backlogged. And should probably what YouTube there. channel are we uploading to? I have no idea. I went to YouTube and typed in Yardley EAC and it was the top three. And then the next one down was a fight in McDonald's or whatever. <laughs> There's a great thumbnail of Michael if you do that. Yeah. Did you see that, Alex? It's great. So great. I can't wait to see what this one is. Let's see. So if there's nothing else pressing, we can Oh, that's kinda, a great thumbnail. Yeah. We can kind of close this meeting, I guess. Is there anything else you guys want to be like pursuing in the meantime or just, I mean, we're, we're all just kind of status quo, I guess. Yeah. Um, I've been interested in the, the Princeton, I forgot the name of the group, but the Princeton report, they were talking about managing like educating around like waterfowl droppings. And I don't really know what's happened since that report in that regard, if anything, but it might be like, I, I thought it was kind of an interesting way to go about dealing with kind of direct phosphorus inputs into the lake. Yeah, it's kind of like a touchy subject, ironically because Friends of Lake Afton have the ducks um, and they actually have like a bird food vending machine and it's not the first time that's been installed. Apparently the first time they put it up, like someone tore it out and like got rid of it. And I specifically remember other engineers saying that if you're having problems with eutrophication, like what are you doing putting a bird food vending machine there and encouraging all the birds to come? So I don't know. The bigger problem is not the ducks, it's probably the, the swarms of Canadian geese that come. And the other issue with waterfowl droppings is the bacterial content. And I think on our list of water quality parameters. Liz was looking at adding um, either fecal coliform or E. coli, probably fecal coliform um, counts. Specifically also, I think around the upper dam too. Okay. Because there's that big pond behind the upper dam. So that's I don't know, my take on the waterfowl droppings, but yeah, it's a lot of nutrients as well. Gotcha. And it all just sits in the pond, especially once we understand just how bad the residence time is in Lake Afton. It probably only gets flushed out really with storm water. Right. Is there like, like I don't know much about dredging for lakes like that, but is that like an, an impossibly difficult task or? No, I don't think so. Um, I wouldn't say it's out of the question either. It's just a matter of what would be the environmental impacts versus the positive impacts, long-term impacts on everything. So that'll hopefully be flushed out in the watershed management plan. That's kind of the goal. I wouldn't rule it out and I wouldn't say it's the way to go at this point. Um, you know, there's probably people who would be polarized on each side of that, as seems to be the way of the country at this point. It probably filters all the way down to talking about a lake. So I think it was like 
maybe it was already assessed. The number was pretty astronomical. Maybe like, I don't even want to throw a number out there because I don't know if it's right. Um, so, so I don't know where that stands. It's definitely a number, that could be a done. number of what cost? Like a, or... like, yeah, like a dollar number. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I do think many people would consider it routine maintenance on a man-made water body such as Lake Afton. It's just, it's a sediment trap. There's no way around it. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, I was just kind of curious about, because it's been five years since I'm, I'm reading this report and what people are talking about there. And I wasn't sure, you know, what exactly may or may not have happened in that, in that time. Yeah, definitely no dredging. Nope. You would have read about that. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, the bathmetric survey will also help us understand how much sediment is actually in there. The point right. is that they're going to figure out how much soft sediment is there. And that's one of the main goals. So we'll see. It's do probably know, like super deep. Yeah. Do we know how deep the actual digging was for it? I doubt there was much digging. Maybe there was. I, I honestly don't know the construction. I assume it was just really, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe there was digging. Because it was originally for the grist mill. And there used to be a second side to the lake over in the grist mill parking lot that is now the grist mill parking lot. And there used to be a bridge there on Main Street. Um, so now it's just piped under into these little clear wells. And then it discharges into the creek. So I don't know. I don't know how deep it was. There's no like as built that I've ever seen. This will probably be the most detailed map that we get. So that sounds yeah. exciting. We'll see what the product is. <laughs> Theoretically, it's exciting. Hopefully, it's not just like a very simple map. It's Hopefully, kind of it's not fear. just an inch. Yeah, they're supposed to do two transects. Okay. Combined with a boundary survey, I would assume that would give us a relatively good estimate. Yeah. It's not that big a lake, so. Yeah. Be crazy. I'm going to keep reading, but um, is there somewhere I can kind of catch up on things like the bathymetric survey and kind of make sure that I'm up to date on what, what that plan is? Uh, yes, probably the proposed scope of work. I don't know. Did you get into that? I don't think I have. I don't think I've read that specific document yet. The um, detailed project description, which is part of the application package. It's relatively short, total length, 10 pages, but there's like a lot of stuff you wouldn't need to read in it. Mm -hmm. There's um, a more concise but detailed version of the scope of work in there. So, I mean, bathymetric survey is really just a survey of the bottom of a lake. Right. So they're going to go out in like a John boat and just survey it. So that would... Okay, that's in the 2017 Yardley Borough application folder? Yeah, probably. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not, like, missing something. All right. Anything else? You guys all surf thriving, as they say on the wilderness shows? What did they say? Sir thriving Surf instead thri of surviving. surviving. It's yeah. like a show called Alone. It's pretty <clears throat> awful, but okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I got nothing else. Alex, you got anything else? No, I think that exhausted my question for today. All right. Just whatever time you spend reading, just make sure you track it so we know 
Oh, I did have a question about that. Is it any any increment of time, like, I assumed it was one plus hours, but is it anything in between or? Whatever you want to do. I usually, like, whatever I can remember, like a half hour. If you can remember 15 minutes, that's great. I don't think it's needed. If you can yeah. remember a half hour here, I half hour there. Forget 15 minutes pretty readily, but I'll, I'll definitely put down like the half an hour, etc. <laughs> as if if I have those. There's a cartoon where they said like a quarter hours, like the what did they say? smallest manageable time increment or something. I don't know because their HR person was like track every five minutes. He's like it's not possible. I don't know consultants crazy <laughs> careful i've been there i hated point threes i wouldn't do that i point point two fives point always two? became yeah point two fives always became point three and i was like i can't deal with this because you'll get to point nines it's like i'm not no so hey all right that's it i guess I'm going to stop the recording. All right. Bye, Paula.